Hello, I'm Lux, and we're still in color. <laughs> and I'm Ember, and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 9, Episodes 3 and 4, Uprooted and Twilight 7. Well, I liked Episode 4 better than 3, except for a couple of cringe moments in Episode 4, but overall the feel of Episode 4 I enjoyed more. Episode 3 had its good points, but it had that, like, oh god, this is that classic scenario. All the friends know how to solve the problem, but they have to do it their own way, and then their own ways fail because they're not doing it together, and then they do it together and everything gets solved. Yeah, but am I the only one who finds it creepy that you basically took the remains of the tree and made something out of it? Now, a tree that's just been lightning damaged, fallen over, whatever, I can see that because it's just a tree. Check the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe uh, series and you'll know what I'm talking about. Actually, it's very similar to that. You have a magical tree that's later taken down. It's built into a wardrobe and that wardrobe functions as a magical portal. Yeah, that's actually very Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The tree is destroyed. They use the parts of the tree to make a tree house and hey, now we got a tree house. And the tree's back. And I think I just spoiled about something in the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe series, because I've only ever really experienced the first book in book form and theater. I experienced the other books through the movies that I think Disney did, but I didn't know about that about the wardrobe. I'm guessing that's one in the one of the earlier books. <laughs> I did air quotes because I'm saying earlier chronologically in this series, not earlier in publishing series. Because the set is released two different ways. Later editions put it in chronological order, which is full of spoilers. Instead of doing the correct order, which is the book set that I got when I was a kid. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Pink, Prince Caspian, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Silver Chair, The Horse and His Boy, Magician's Nephew, and The Last Battle. Uh, but now back to MLP and building a tree fort out of a living tree that was previously destroyed and that because of the power of friendship we now have a second tree castle thingy it's more of a tree house crystal thingy so yeah and it's a special protective fortress thing now okay that's gonna be important in the season finale isn't it yeah they're gonna be able to retreat back there because the tree tells them they can come there for solace so yeah, no, actually, no, to answer your question, no, I wasn't creeped out by that. It's not creepy, but I'm just saying the tree's a sentient creature. Change that over to anything not made of crystal, and it becomes a little creepy. I think it's also more of like a robot being reconstructed than a living thing. Because in a way, the Tree of Harmony was created, it was manufactured. Yes, the seeds were planted, but they didn't know what was going to happen. So, we had interesting points. I, I love how the griffin is the one who automatically jumps to, I'm going to make money off of this. Well, we've shown griffins to be money obsessed back when we were showing all other species as one-dimensional characters. Oh, that's another character I wouldn't mind seeing now that she's less jerky. Gilda. Mm -hmm. And more griffins is always good, because more of any of the other species is always good. And of course, the earth pony, I'm going to plant a new tree. <laughs> earth pony, plant things. Right on, little dude. It's kind of interesting how Smolder went sculpture. Then dragon sculptures, is that a thing? Is giant statues a thing with them? Well, remember the, they would put together like, rock sculptures that they would use in like target practice and stuff also dragons rocks fire treasure she's a young dragon no treasure so though another interesting point about this particular episode is how the tree of harmony said i need your help basically invade their nightmares <laughs> well they didn't all look nightmarish okay ocellus and the hippogriffs Look nightmarish. Yona's was traditional nightmare falling. What was so nightmarish about Smolder? She was fine until the others saw her. That. That right there. 
because that's her fear that people will find out that she's a bit girly on the inside. And think less of her. Never mind the fact that Dragon Lord Ember is female. I'm sorry, if the leader of all the dragons is a girl, I don't think you have to worry about being girly. Or more effeminate, I think is the current term. And as usual, Sandbar is just about mild disasters. Just like how his hearth-swarming doll fell and was fine. Your nightmare is that you can only choose one baked good? <laughs> he, he is, like, it's hard to describe. He is so mild compared to everyone else. I was almost going to say vanilla. I was like, that can't actually work because he is complicated. Because most people don't realize how complicated the flavor of vanilla actually is. And I'm still trying to figure out how it became the flavor of nothing. <laughs> Probably a lot of poorly used vanilla. Or maybe vanilla was used as the base for everything that you built off of. So vanilla was what happened when you didn't do anything else. Ah, that one, that one sounds better. And now I remember a Gak song. Moving on. We might have to link to that, just because. Not the concert version. Let's let's try and keep our rating. Oh, oh yeah. But if you want to, just type in Gak Concerts. You'll be rewarded with lots of cool stuff. Just be prepared. We told you nothing. <laughs> okay, let's... Oh, want to move on to the next episode, or are there more points that you want to bring up about this one? Well, Gallus brings up a point near the end of the episode of, did we just get friendship schooled by the Yak? Showing that they still have a fair amount of prejudices. Also, that this is the first episode where we get a song. Oh, yeah? Not a very memorable one, but it's there. I remember parts of it, mostly the talky parts. Like, I think there was one part where Yuna says to, I can't remember who, but I think you got it wrong. Yeah, and... You know, let's not uh, skip over the whole permission slip thing. Hmm. I was like, you want that in triplicate? What? I like to be prepared. I'm like, if he likes to be prepared, they should already be signed. That's what I thought they were. I thought they were already signed. I know, but then he went back and went to ask Grandpa Griff. And, and I like the Hippogriff's basically slideshow presentation of why she needed the permission slip signed. <laughs> And her expressions that went along with each slide. Mm -hmm. And her family just like kind of looking like, okay, we get it, we think. Like basically, we'll sign, okay? And yay! I'm trying to remember, like, was there one that like basically got the slip and then handed it back, signed like almost immediately? Like it was like, okay, go. Oh, uh, that was Grandpa Griff, because basically he shoved the slip right onto Gallus's face. Gallus didn't even have time to say anything. And then with the changelings, basically everyone colored on it. Ah, uh, yeah. Because they still don't know pony traditions. Mm-hmm. They'll get there eventually because they'll form their own and they come up with their own things. But at least it's acceptable in the school. <laughs> yes. But let's not forget this isn't the first time we've had a permission slip situation. So they have to have gone through it once before. And... Apparently, Yona just had to earn her way into getting her signed. That that was the most entertaining one for me. Because I was like, okay, what is she going to do? Is she going to, like, break those? Or, oh, she's cleaning them. Ah, chores. I get it. Yes, the traditional payoff for when you want to do something. Do all your chores and a few extras. That reminds me of the explanation of why yaks break stuff. I can't remember exactly what it is, but, like, I remember going, hey, I like that philosophy. <laughs> I think we'll speak along the lines of things are temporary anyways. You rebuild and move on. So basically a whole episode dealing with grief. I was almost expecting them to break the student six up into the stages of grief. Hmm. But I guess that would have been too easy. Yeah, and they've kind of done the whole grief thing specifically before Tank. But it was kind of another opportunity for it. Because you can cover a topic more than once. Quite. Also... Who votes that the elements of harmony are absolutely fine because we saw them putting elements of harmony that were broken in half back together? Oh, yeah. 
also there's that whole plus thing of they have the elements inside themselves. I mean, it's kind of been pointed out before with the whole rainbow magic thing because they didn't have the elements of harmony then. It did come from the tree of harmony, I believe. And before we switch episodes, I meant to start with called it. Of course, the tree is fine. Yep. But now moving on. To basically Ocean's Eleven, pony style. Quite. And right off the bat, once we got past the introduction of what the story point was, I was like, I like this episode. Because it's the classic, okay, I've got a team together. You have this specialty, you have this specialty, and you have this specialty. And we're going to break into this place and get the treasure. The only thing that truly didn't make sense was why do you tell Twilight what all the defenses are? Because that means she can coordinate a plan to nullify each specific item. You just tell her, hey, I beefed up defenses, try to break in. Because he knew if he told her, he knew a plan she'd make. But it's not a good test. I was just about to say that. But after saying that, it's not a good test because you're only testing for one scenario you already know. Which means it's not really a test. So you're abusing the fact that the Princess of Equestria asked you to beef up security. Also, I love how you picked up on the subplot in the background with Spike and Luna. I knew Luna wasn't accepting of what was going on and she was heavily annoyed by it. But I didn't suspect that Spike and her would be together. And as usual, you're like, I, I kind of saw that coming. <laughs> Well, it was pretty much cemented by the time that Fluttershy and Spike were trapped down in the catacombs together because we get to hear the whole, yeah, I was kind of like the little brother, only not. You know, when we get the story of the crown, it was always between Shining Armor and Twilight. Even though we see Spike in the background in all of that flashback, he never was actually a part of it. So how much does that have to rankle that everybody else is playing a game, you're right there and you don't get to play? Mm. Yep, and I just love the entire time Luna's expressions for most of this. Like, uh, Celestia. And we get more of that wonderful actual sisterly reactions and interactions between Celestia and Luna. Because I've, I've heard horror stories of how sisters treat each other and still go, I love you. Kind of like girls, and I've heard in general, horror, horror stories. <laughs> like, you did what to who for what? Wow. <laughs> and moving on to all the crazy plans specifically, Rarity is going, I'm taking over at this, and we're going to do something unexpected. Which actually probably would have worked, except for Spike sabotaging the plan. Because I was trying to figure out, how did Pinkie Pie's, Pinkie Pie's balloon pop? I mean, she's Pinkie Pie. Also, apparently she really wanted to go to space. Space! <laughs> Play a game called Portal 2. You'll get that. I mean, not like the internet hasn't played it already, but there might be those few people out there. What, you mean like me? Eh. You at least know where that's coming from, though. Well, yeah. And one thing I couldn't quite place, why the blue ears on Fluttershy and Spike's sneak suits. Blue ears? Mm-hmm. Were they bunny ears? Kinda. Okay, I think it's referencing back to the one time Fluttershy was sneaking about, which was a bunny suit kind of outfit. Also, I enjoy that one part of their plan really worked because they got a guard badge. Who on earth would hire Zephyr Breeze? And why on earth would Zephyr Breeze accept? Hiring implies work. I did not mind Zephyr Breeze in this episode, though he was involved in one of the cringe scenes. Cringy scenes for me. Ah, uh, yeah. One of those guys who thinks no means yes and get lost means take me, I'm yours. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, if you think about this scene too deeply, sexual harassment's up the wazoo. Yeah. Just let me clue you in, guys. If you don't think she's that into you, she's not. Even if you think she is into you, she's probably not. Most females are too nice and too passive-aggressive to tell you directly, get lost. If you get to the point where one of them yells at you like that, you've missed about 50 signals. But back to Pony. Just trying to remember some stuff like, yeah, Gummy was with Pinkie Pie, right? Mm -hmm. When she put the fish bowls on her head? Mm -hmm. 
I also like how Pinkie Pie's was like the most vivid vision because she was like up in space space with actual space suits on. Also, apparently that's the thing. Now I just realized it. Pinkie Pie knows about space and traveling into it. And she imagined space suits. It's just, is that just her breaking the fourth wall into our dimension? Or do ponies actually have vehicles that can go into space? I mean, magic? Is it would be a good way to get a vehicle up there, but is that actually a thing? Hard to say. Also, we play that. How many holes can we find in Shining Armor's plan? So you can't use magic to get into the castle. What's to stop Twilight from winking into the throne room when she's actually in the castle? Also, why didn't she just levitate the crown like Luna did? There was no reason to fly over and above the trap door. Also, depending on how far away she can wing something from, why not just take it from the castle grounds? Because specifically the magic that was modified from Chrysalis's throne was to keep ponies from teleporting in. Nothing about teleporting out. Why not just stand outside the castle grounds and wink the crown? Actually, I think, I think the shield worked both ways. If you managed to get inside, you were trapped. But... I think you would also have to get the crown out of the protected building to be able to teleport it. So a good plan would have had Fluttershy get into that part, put it out of a window, and then someone like Pinkie Pie could signal, it's outside! That's actually a very simple plan and probably would have worked. Also, the, the moment I saw those birds, I'm like, yeah, they're going to go false alarms all the time. I mean, it's a cool idea because geese actually make really good guard animals. Oh yeah, those suckers are mean when they don't like you. They will chase you down. Not that I've experienced this myself, but I've seen it happen. Uh, they bite and peck very hard. I've actually been bitten by a domestic goose. Mm. I had a bunch of bad puns that didn't actually work, so I'm keeping them to myself. Selves? Okay, apparently there's more than one of me. I would expect you'd get more done that way. I think they're all up here. For the purpose of radio, he pointed at his head. Yes. Also, why couldn't the geese look more like geese? That's, I don't think they were supposed to be geese. I don't think they called them geese directly. I think they called them some type of, some type of other bird. They called them geese. I could have sworn they said something. It's kind of like, just a bear? Not an owl bear or a panda bear or a duck no. bear it just says bear weird uh not that that was obscure or anything but write the answer below what series that's from and also going along with the theory of there were so many ways to get around this rainbow dash is able to get by all of the wind turbines because we proved that when she sneaks fluttershy in rainbow dash is the fastest she couldn't have just gotten past all the turbines, gone in, grabbed the crown, because she would have been flying the whole time. Who cares if the geese alarm goes off? It doesn't count unless you're caught. You just grab the crown and sonic rain boom the heck out of there. Yeah, simple solutions to complex problems. Yes. So much fun. I did definitely enjoy this episode. It was just the couple of parts that were kind of cringy. Though I also like how crazy Rarity went. Very crazy. It was also nice to see a return to her uh, film noir style. Yes, that was very, very, very pleasant. Uh, I like how she also included Rainbow Dash in it, and she's the muscle. Mm-hmm. Good choice. And also the, what do you mean it's closed? Are we supposed to shake people down for information? Oh, what did you want to know? <laughs> Secret passages to Cantalot? Over there. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me question the security of this place. No wonder bad guys take over this place all the time. Yeah, I kind of think your first problem is having secret passages that everyone knows about. Yeah, they're not so secret. That suddenly reminds me of the tongue twister of Fuzzy Wuzzy. Okay. He wasn't very fuzzy, was he? Not secret passages? This is how my brain works, ladies and gentlemen. I have an ADHD brain. That means the most random stuff will pop in there. Then it will forget it seconds later. Yes, and there is absolutely no... No correlation for the rational mind, so... The correlation was, even though it's called something, that it's not. Fuzzy was called fuzzy, but...
but he wasn't fuzzy. Secret passages that aren't secret. See? Logical. Why is everyone staring at me weird? I don't know. Maybe they don't like your highlights. Yeah, it's kind of a natural thing. I was born this way. I woke up this morning just like this. Now, that was really an obscure reference. If you actually know that one, I will be surprised. <laughs> I doubt most people know the one that you're thinking of, but there's a newer one. Flawless. Ah, okay, well, back to the episode. Or are we getting near the wrap-up point for these two? Yeah, I love how they kind of leave us guessing. Applejack, did you just make all that up, or is this actually a thing? Yeah, that made me question some stuff. Like, did this actually happen? I'm not sure I'm buying this, because it doesn't quite fit in with her whole canonized story of going off with the uh, oranges and learning high society stuff and then deciding to go back to her family, because why would she need to go through that twice? She leaves home, misses her family, comes back. A couple years later, all right, I I'm going to leave home. Oh, dang it, I miss my family again. You know, now that I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking AJ's story about the country singer and stuff is a reference to a trope in heist movies. The person who can change and do makeup and pretend to be someone else. Though I would put AJ to be more of the muscle than the disguise person. Well, remember, they also used her as the muscle because they had her buck that rock. Hmm. Also, wonderful cameo of Mod Pie. And wonderful use of Mod's abilities. Mm hmm Ding, ding. Dunk, dunk. <laughs> like, I got good legs, but I can't kick through solid rock. <laughs> yeah, but I also like how Twilight automatically knew how everyone would fit into her master plan. <laughs> Well, they're her friends, she knows them well, and she's a master planner. And besides, this one was for all the marbles. Hmm. You get to keep the crown forever. You know, and it's not like she was bitter or anything about the fact that Shining Armor took it off to guard camp with him and never brought it back and kept it way longer than it was supposed to. Interesting things. Interesting. Twilight and Shining Armor. Once again, I'd like to point out how wonderful retcon Shining Armor is. Though... They were acting kind of young. Yeah, they're a bit old for this kind of nonsense. I know you can have fun of things and reminisce about things in the past, but they were like very like, it's on. Yeah, a little too serious for what it was. Mm hmm I'm sorry, Twilight, you have a crown. You're the princess of friendship. Are you really that upset about a piece of tinfoil? It's more of a personal thing. Okay, any final thoughts you'd like to wrap up on, or shall I just go right out into the intro? Into the intro, really? We're going to go backwards. I see what I did there. I'm sorry. Or shall I go right into the outro? I believe that was a nod. <laughs> so, here's the outro. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 9, Episodes 3 and 4, Uprooted, and Twilight's 7. Hey, so welcome to the outro. Yes, still in color. You know, once he actually got the work done, it's no longer extra work to keep it in color. Nope. So, I've only been asking for two years, but back to the outro. Uh, like, subscribe, share, comment, watch other videos, and then we have links to lead you away from YouTube. Once you're done, like art, Patreon, coffee, affiliate links, all that fun stuff. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.